Um, so I'm Georgina Lansell. Um, I'm the Director of Talent Acquisition at Foxton. I've been here just under four years now. Um, and since then, um, we have ch- completely changed our recruitment team, our talent acquisition department. Um, we had to move it initially in line with market changes. And then obviously with the last couple of years and everything that's happened there, we've continued to develop it and transform it. But we've, um, yeah, we've, we've changed so much. For me, everywhere I've worked, I've built in a piece that has involved the candidate getting to know the job as well as us getting to know the candidate. So for us, our assessment centre is split into three parts and two of those parts especially involve tasks that are as closely related to being an estate agent as possible without actually being in one of our front offices. So I think firstly, um, assessment centres more than interviews, much more than interviews, can allow candidates um, a real insight into how um, they might be conducted day to day, how they might do their job. yeah. The, the challenging bits as well as the good bits. Um, secondly, I'd say for us um, area directors, which are our sort of main hiring managers, um, and also the, the level below that who help us a huge amount in this process, don't even see a CV. They, they, you know, they might know the they'll know the candidate's name because they'll have a sticker on with their name, um, which obviously yeah. helps us when assessing them. But they won't know anything about that candidate's background until the very end of the process. So it removes so Love much it. bias. Yeah. So- bits that we've done um, are to make sure that our processes you know have things like multiple assessors so that um, it, that's without the assessor even having to do anything you know that we're, we're building a process that means that for the candidate hopefully there is less bias because they are being seen by at least three different people throughout the process and then just, be interviewed by someone else entirely again at the end so exactly. that's a big one so processes yeah. would be a big one can think of people that I hired you know earlier on in my career that mi- really made me believe in this as an industry you know I remember a guy that I hired in my first job working for hydrogen group probably a year into that that role he came up to me and he said I've just bought an Audi uh, TT outright and it's all because of you you know you put me in this job and I love what I'm doing and he was um he was a recruiter for pharmaceuticals and he just you know Actually, um, you know, I am driven by being ambitious and career orientated and I wanted to go and go on and do great things and earn good money. But also there's it's more to it. That I want to make sure that I am finding the right people. It's not a bums on seats job for me. It's a what do we need and how do we build a process that accurately finds that to find the right person that's going to genuinely enjoy their career here. So I think. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think anyone who works in the TA industry that or really at any business that says there isn't talent waste. I think is fibbing personally. I think it, why we wouldn't be needed if there was no talent waste. If companies operated perfectly, they always found the right people, you know, they stayed for, you know, even five years and then they moved on. We wouldn't be needed as TA professionals. So, yeah, no, absolutely. I think there is, um, you know, there is a, a problem, you know, UK wide, probably worldwide with, yeah. with talent waste. And I think it's up to us to continue to try to improve processes, experiences, you know, what we're offering. EVPs, Brad, all of that, I think. I think 2023 could be a really interesting and challenging EFTA. I think we're going to continue to see companies tightening their belts. So I think we'll see salaries kind of continuing to stabilise and jobs, job numbers possibly continuing to kind of drop off a bit. Um, but I also think we're going to see candidates being a bit, you know, playing it a bit more safe. I think people won't want to be that kind of last one in, first one out type person. So I think it could be, you know, I think there'd be a lot of pressure because there's going to be pressure on companies to perform, which means there'll be pressure on TA to find the right people for the right roles. Um, but I think it's, it could be really challenging. I think we might, you know, there might be situations where you've got reduced budget or resource or whatever, and you've still got to find the right people, but the right people maybe don't want to move. So I think the, the economy as a whole, um, it always affects TA, um, you know, wh- whichever way it goes, it affects TA negatively or positively. So I think next year could be really challenging and interesting. Yeah, so we've we've still got loads of jobs at Foxton's. If anyone is interested in finding out a bit more about that, we'd love to hear from you. But I also am super passionate about networking. So please do add me on LinkedIn. I'd love to, you know, possibly not for the next couple of months. I think I'll have a lot on my plate. But after that, I'd love to meet for coffees and things like that with anyone who's who's kind of similarly as passionate as I am. So yeah, no, please do find me on LinkedIn, drop me a message, um, get in touch through Foxton's too. Um, yeah, keen to keen to meet more.